Welcome back to Getting Started with Game Creator. To keep track of the world state and player progress, we use something called variables. Variables are basically data containers identified by a key whose value can change at runtime. For example, the player's health could be represented using a numeric variable that starts with a value of 100 and decreases when it takes damage from enemies. Variables can have a global or a local scope. Global variables are accessible from anywhere and are not bound to any particular scene. To create a global variable, right-click on the project panel and select Create, Game Creator, Variables, and choose any of the two available options. Local variables are components attached to game objects, so to create one, select a reference from the scene and click on the Add Component button. Navigate to the Variable section and choose one of the two available options. A global and local variable can either be a named variable or a list variable. Named variables are identified by a unique name, which can be used to access its value. List variables are identified by their index in the list, starting from zero. So in total, we have four types of variables. Global name variables, local name variables, global list variables, and local list variables. All types can store a wide range of values, including strings, numbers, textures, game object references, among others. In the previous video, we learned how to click on a chest and play a sequence of instructions. We had the problem that the chest would repeat the same behavior over and over again when clicked. In order for the chest to only open once, we'll add a local name variable component on the chest itself. We can create a new variable entering the name of this text box and press the return key or the little plus icon. We can use any name we want, but we recommend using descriptive ones. For example, this variable will allow us to control whether the chest has been opened or not. So we'll give it the name, is chest open. Let's change the type of this variable to boolean and leave its value as it is. You can think of Boolean values as a switch that can only be two states, on or off. Let's go back to the trigger and add the instruction set Boolean to modify the newly created local name variable. To do so, we change the set field to local name variable and drag and drop the component to the field below. We can type the name of the variable or we can select it from the drop-down menu on the right. Every time we run this interaction, the value of the local name variable will change to true. What we're now going to do is check if the isChestOpen variable is true at the very beginning of the instructions list. If it is, we will exit the execution. We can add a new instruction at the top of the list by right-clicking the topmost instruction and selecting the Insert Above option from the menu. Let's search for the Check Conditions instruction. We can continue the execution if the IsChestOpen variable is false. If it is true, we want to exit the execution. So we choose the condition Compare Boolean. and set the source of the first value as the local name variable. We untick the checkbox of the second value, so it reads, if chest is open equals false, continue. If not, stop the execution. Let's click play and see the results. As we can see, Clicking on the chest for the first time works as expected. However, clicking it a second time will do nothing because the chest has already been opened. As a side note, instead of using a local name variable, we could have used a global name one. 
Deciding between either one is a matter of personal preference. When in doubt, though, we recommend using local variables. At the bottom of all variable types, there's an ID field with a save icon. The ID field is a key used to differentiate and store values. It is very important that the ID is unique among any others, so no two objects share the same one. To make things easier, you can click on this button to generate a new and unique one. If the save icon is on, the variable values will be stored between play sessions when the game is saved. However, that's not the only way to store information between play sessions. In the next and final video, we'll see how we can save and load the game, as well as choose what type of information is stored. Hasta la vista!